instrument-wise, it has always been one big journey, finding the perfect bass, finding the right overdrive, finding the right amplifier. If you really listen closely, it's pretty loud in the mix, actually. The first time bass guitar came into my life, that was probably when I was like 12 years old. Um, we had some uh, neighbors whose kids actually owned an electric guitar. And uh, I've never heard of a bass guitar before a bit when I was 12 years old. I didn't know the difference between a rhythm guitar, lead guitar or a bass guitar at all. Uh, but funny enough, the oldest brother, he had uh, a bass guitar. And the first time when I heard it, I was really blown away. It never really came up to me that it was basically like an upright bass in guitar form. And uh, he had also this huge amplifier over there. And uh, the first time I heard it, it was like feeling like experiencing an, an earthquake, basically. And uh, back in those days, my brother already started playing electric guitar and he wanted to form a band. And basically everybody back then wanted to play in a band, but everybody wanted to play guitar or they wanted to play drums. So I kind of, you know, kind of sacrificed myself and I switched to a bass guitar because uh, I must say I, I was kind of blown away by the instrument and uh, yeah I still don't regret that I'd made that choice well the first band that I ever played in that was uh, well, it was kind of shitty band to be honest like everybody starts we knew we were just playing very simple covers of bands like The Clash and Sex Pistols so pretty punk based basic hard rock stuff but what I really liked is that um, I really already kind of felt that I was one of the guys in the band that really had to like carry the music. It always felt like fun, like I was making a fundament in that band. And especially alongside with the drummer, um, people could rely on us. That's where it was based on. That's also what I'm experiencing these days. If somebody asks me, what is your function as a bass player in the band? What I, for instance, in Epica, the way how I see it is like I'm basically gluing the guitars and drums together. That's my main, you know, task musically. I understand that that many people so sometimes I, I i get this complaint from people that they say like that the bass isn't really audible in our music but you should i mean if you really listen closely it's pretty loud in the mix actually if you would leave out the bass it would be a big hole in the, in the audio well first of all when i joined epica they said to me, like, you know, you can do whatever you want. I mean, be yourself, play whatever you want to play, if you want to change parts or whatever. I already respected the sound of the band, so I tried to, I don't say that I tried to copy my, uh, like Eve, the former bass player. He played with a pick, for instance. That's something I picked up when I started playing with Epica. That's a very important part of the sound as well. But instrument-wise, it has always been one big journey, finding the perfect bass, finding the right overdrive, finding the right amplifier what i've learned through the years is that the simpler your setup the better um i've had i still own like a huge load of pedals and stuff like that but in the end i maybe use like a simple di or maybe one overdrive and that's about it same goes for bass guitars i have owned like the most expensive bass guitars out there with all these fancy preamps on it with a lot of knobs and switches and whatever but the funny thing is that through the years, everything became more simple. Because that's also one of the reasons why, for instance, I play on a passive bass in general, is that each and every time that I did a show and uh, or I went to the studio, it's always like the engineer comes to me like, okay, that's a cool bass sound, but could you maybe, you know, put everything, dial everything on zero, for instance, like bass, treble, or mid frequencies. Can you maybe put everything on, yeah, you know, basically on passive if, if it's possible. Because then the sound engineer has way more control over your sound. And to be honest, when I play passive, I have way more headroom in my sound. That I also like that myself. Also when you're playing on stage, when you have a little bit more dynamics into your, for instance, in-ear system, that's how we work live, then I have way more control over what I do. 
Because if you would put like uh, a whole load of compression or overdrive or whatever kind of effects on your bass, I have less control on what I'm playing. It kind of covers it up and I prefer to have like a real open and real honest and true sound. That's I'll play better that way anyway. That goes for live work, but it also is the same story for when you're in the studio, same story. Each and every time I go into the studio, the producer, in this case Joost or Jos, he always says to me, you know, put everything on zero and we're good to go.